I think it's important to go back to uh, the year 2014 when we had a horrific Ebola outbreak in West Africa, Guinea, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and we really needed to understand what would be the impact of this VSV uh, Ebola v vaccine called the recombinant VSV ZBOF uh, vaccine in an outbreak uh, setting. And so far, the indications are that this is a very effective uh, and relatively safe uh, vaccine. As a consequence of that, when the current outbreak happened in North Kivu in Democratic Republic of Congo, there was a lot of interest to see whether or not this vaccine could control that outbreak. And my understanding is as of this point, more than 30,000 people have received the Ebola vaccine. And my sense is that it's having a big impact because although we've had more than 400 Ebola cases and 200 deaths, I think those numbers could have been far worse had those 30,000 individuals not been vaccinated. There are no approved therapies uh, specific for Ebola viral disease. Um, there are several potential products out there, medical countermeasures as we call them. Um, the one with the most experience um, is uh, a product called ZMAP, which is a monoclonal antibody preparation that has three chimeric antibodies directed against Ebola. Um, and that was used during the 2014 to 16 outbreak sort of as uh, compassionate use. Um, however, at, towards the end of the outbreak, there was a study called the Prevail 2 study um, that was uh, performed in Liberia, where they were able to actually enroll several uh, patients with Ebola. Um, unfortunately, they didn't meet their enrollment targets. And so statistically, we, uh, we're not sure if uh, a of the ZMAP product actually provided a significant benefit to patients with Ebola, but it definitely looked uh, towards uh, that direction. And so that has been sort of the focus of uh, preparation for Ebola therapy. For this group of what we call the neglected tropical diseases or NTDs, like Ebola, but also what we're working on, like schistosomiasis and leishmaniasis and uh, Chagas disease. Unfortunately, the world has responded by saying you only get one shot on goal. You only get one choice of modality. And, and I don't know where that comes from, but we've, we've got to break that idea because the other neglected tropical diseases are every bit as complex as AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis. We need multiple modalities. In Africa, currently, there's an outbreak in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And there, um, through a multinational consortium, there is a large clinical trial that has opened. Um, and this clinical trial does include the ZMAP product as one arm, but they are also evaluating two other um, uh, good potential products, uh, one being remdesivir, which is a direct-acting uh, antiviral agent uh, that has broad activity but does have activity against Ebola viruses. And then uh, the third product that they'll be evaluating is a product known as MAB114. Um, and this is a monoclonal antibody that actually was derived from a survivor of a previous outbreak in that same area, in the Kikwik outbreak. Um, and that uh, was uh, discovered and cloned by researchers at the National Institutes of Health, the NIH, here in the United States and then uh, made into a product uh, and is now ready for clinical trials. Now, with these clinical studies that are well developed, uh, we will really be able to get um, some really nice data that will help inform the clinicians and developers of new medical countermeasures. Specifically, both um, the extended access protocol here in the United States and the multinational uh, uh, clinical trial will look at overall mortality with uh, Ebola, comparing um, z the products that are being used to standard of care and historical controls. In addition, we'll be collecting samples from patients during the course of therapy and afterwards to, one, understand how these products are working within the body, what the levels they're able to achieve, and if they're working directly against the viruses themselves. So the problem that we're facing is not really a technological problem. It's a, pro it's a social problem. It's a, it's a problem of political instability and conflict, which blocks access 
for the vaccinators to go into affected areas and do their job. And this has actually become a new important 21st century theme with regard to neglected tropical diseases. An important lesson learned here is that whenever we see uh, serious levels of conflict and political instability, we have to recognize that uh, catastrophic epidemics of neglected tropical diseases will surely follow. So this has become a recurring theme and I think the international community has not really figured this one out yet. How to preemptively mobilize healthcare workers and life-saving neglected tropical disease technologies when conflict arises.